Hey, what's up, everybody? Media 44 coming at you with another video. All right, so L.A. Lakers play tonight at the Phoenix uh, against the Phoenix Suns, and they have a chance of getting eliminated tonight if they lose. Simple as that. Um, we've been talking a lot about the word mathematically. The Lakers are mathematically in a position to make the play-in tournament, but technically. Uh, that's all it is because if you look at things and from a realistic standpoint you look at who the Lakers are in competition with they are in a position to firmly kick the Lakers up out of here and have been for a lot of um, for a lot of days for about three four different straight games the Lakers have been in position to um, you know have control over their destiny by winning those games and ultimately put themselves in a position to not have to worry about who does what outside of their own situation and the Lakers didn't take care of their own business so now they have to rely upon others to lose in games where they're not favored to lose in order for the Lakers to have a shot on top of winning out at this point in order for us to make the playoffs. So um, tonight is the night. <laughs> From what I understand, we lose this game, we're out of here. Now, uh, um, I've also understood that we may have a slight chance of some sort with the mathematics if we were to um, win this, lose this game and... Um, if San Antonio were to lose to whoever they play to tonight, I think it was one of those situations. I think the Lakers could still be around, I think. But, like, the math is not its not in our favor at all. We have to uh, to win tonight's game no matter what, more or less. Forget, forget mathematics. I don't even know if that's accurate. Point is, you better win tonight. And uh, you're going up against the Suns, the best team in all of basketball. They're probably going to arrest a bunch of their starters because uh, they did against OKC, and OKC got them. They beat the Suns because they rested Aiton, Booker, and Crowder. So I don't know if the Suns do us the favor of doing that, but I don't even know if it matters. Because uh, even if they don't go full strength, whoever their star player is for that night, whether it be Cam Payne or Cam Johnson, they're going to be the ones that beat the Lakers. They're going to be the ones um, that hold down the fort. The Phoenix Suns have showed us that they're capable of being a next man up type of team all year long. You still got to deal with Mikael Bridges. And I'm one of the people that believe that Mikael Bridges could be the best player on certain teams in this league right now, uh, depending on where he found himself. It, he's that good. And he just finds himself as a complimentary piece who plays both sides of the ball at an extremely high level. And his offense is getting better and better and better and better. So you look at those three players alone, Cam Johnson campaign, um, and, and, and you look at, you know, some of the other players on that team, they could do work. There's no reason why the Phoenix Suns should lose tonight to the Los Angeles Lakers. Even if they set uh, DeAndre Ayton, you got to deal with Bismack Biombo in the, in the paint, who's playing well. You got to deal with JaVale McGee, who's uh, extremely motivated to play us for obvious reasons. Um, they have a deep team. They don't need their starters to beat us. And uh, they have a chance to set their franchise records for the most wins tonight as well. So they can knock off two, two, kill two birds with one stone, knock off one of their most hated uh, foes in us, the Los Angeles Lakers, and, of course, set uh, the record for their franchise uh, in wins. So I'm not going to sit up here and, and, and just pretend like I think the Lakers are going to defy that, like the Lakers are just going to come in and stop all that from happening. I don't see that. Uh, and it's not that the, the, the men on this roster can't come in and overachieve. Uh, or, or do some good things. It's not that. I've always believed that this roster was better than the record as it pertains to if they had good coaching. Someone else could have gotten more out of what it is that we ran out there this season. Um, and so that's that's been my opinion all season long. Um, and I'm not deviating from that. I do believe that this roster uh, is attached to its coach which is why it is as bad as it is. I think that's why they are their record, I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> because you don't get to separate the two. But if you could, and I would have, about three three weeks into the season, I would have definitely separated him from the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, we would have found ourselves, I think, with a, with a coach who could have did some things that maybe others, uh, that he, maybe that he wasn't able to. So that's been, that's been it. That's what I always say. And I feel like the Lakers are going to, have a very, very good chance of losing any game, even if they play well, because he's going to do things that force that to be the case uh, as usual. So uh, that that's my tune. Now, as far as this game's concerned, Anthony Davis, LeBron James, them being questionable, I, I always think it's a bad idea to send players out in situations like this. 
where, you know, well, there are no situations like this, but it is a bad thing to send players out in the very unique and lonely situation that the Los Angeles Lakers are in, uh, where they simultaneously not only have no picks, but also have all of their players wrapped up in about four players who are all playing through some type of discomfort or injury. Um, for a franchise that doesn't really seem to understand what's best for itself um, in terms of, of, of just helping itself not be as bad as they they are right now for years to come. Doesn't seem like they know how to make decisions that are going to help them not do that. Um, and that's just what we talk about all the time. And, you know, the Lakers find themselves in a situation losing six games in a row, having um, desperation be a part of each and every one of those games. And it just speaks to uh, just, just how little this team has uh, to show for itself. Uh, somehow going around saying this is the most disappointing team in Laker history. I agree. A lot of people run around saying this is the most disappointing team in NBA history. I agree. And I've thought a little bit about this. I'll do more thinking about it, but that's where I'm at with it. I don't think there's a team in the history of the sport that's been more of a disappointment than the 2021-2022 LA Lakers. Um, I just don't think so. And a lot of things are outside of the Lakers' control. I'm not sitting here saying it's all their fault, but yeah, we talk about the results, and that is what you get. Team, no team that I can think of has had higher expectations and fallen flatter. Maybe the Dallas Mavericks who lost to the, we believe, Golden Golden State Warriors, but honestly, they weren't. They didn't have no LeBron James and Anthony Davis on that team. They just really, really had a great record to start the season. It killed the regular season and then fizzled out in the playoffs. That's all that was. They, they weren't nearly as disappointing as us. Not even close. So, yeah, man, that's that's just it. Now we get a chance to, to finally be eliminated and, uh, you know, you root for the team to win because that's what you know how to do. But you just want the team to make good decisions. And, you know, as long as they're mathematically in a position to make bad ones, they're going to continue to do that. And that bad decision is playing these stars, not shutting them down. If we had assets and picks and all this other stuff, I'd still want to shut them down. You know understand what I'm saying? Because it makes sense to, to preserve the health of your talent on your team. But given the unique circumstances of this franchise, it makes even more sense to do so. Uh so and and they're just they're just prone to be bad, I guess. As a franchise, that's where we're at. I'm starting to to look at my team and starting to zoom out. You got to remove the NBA championship that Magic Johnson and, and LeBron James gifted us by just coming together and coming here and make that happen. Because if they didn't show up, you remove that one season we won a championship and we ain't made the playoffs at all in ten years. Ten years, and you can see the type of decision making and the type of thinking that put us in a position to be this bad. It never went away. We just had a break from it. So that's that's what it is. If you want to properly assess this team, you remove that championship from your mind and you just think about those 10 years. You look at the decision making around those 10 years. You look at the way the roster's been constructed year in and year out. Cap space mismanagement up and down the board all 10 of them years. It's one or two plays, moves. Even back to the Kobe days, we were messing up with the cap, not doing things properly. <laughs> I just want this team to gut its entire front office and bring in some people that have never been here before. That's what we need to do. That's the same thing we did when we brought James here. We got a championship because of it. All things considered, we brought an outsider in and won 17. Got to bring some outsiders in, Genie. That's the only way it's going to work because these same people you keep recycling over and over again, they'd have been the same people, been in for 10 years, and you can see the results of them 10 years. You can see it. Anybody want to know what's really going on? You and I both need to read the, the, the pinkest uh, article that everybody's talking about because it really details everything that's going on. I've still yet to do that, but I want to see all the bad moves we've made in this era <laughs> on paper to really see exactly how bad the moves were. Some of them I probably didn't even realize were as bad as they were. It's that, it's that real. So <laughs> that's how I'm looking at my team, man. That's how I'm looking at them. I'm removing that 2020 championship, and I'm looking at everything else. And everything else tells me this organization has been run poorly consistently for a while. And, and the bad decision-making and, 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 and the prone to bad decision-making uh, is still very much present today. Right now, they're still doing stuff that they would have did all in them 10 years and playing these players and, and mismanaging their value, mismanaging their assets and not valuing assets at all, it seems. You know, dangling assets out there for for a temporary playoff opportunity where they know they're not good enough to win. It's just it's how you how you lose, how how to lose. You know, we talk about mismanaging the clock in, on the floor. Basketball players 
uh, not knowing how to foul play people, you know what I mean, in situations where they need to, just like in that last game. We didn't foul the player down the stretch of the game with, with 15 seconds ago. This is the type of stuff. It, it, it's like that is the basketball version of learning how to lose and knowing how to lose. This is the executive version up there in the, in the, in the front office doing all this bad stuff equivalent to poor clock management and not fouling. It's equivalent. Same pattern of mistake making, just in a different form. I just want my Lakers to do what it needs to do so that we can start the process of, 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 of being bad for a purpose. Like teams like the Thunder and Orlando and, and, and Portland, who are bad with a purpose because they are rebuilding. Just like we were when we got JC, just like we were when we got Julius Randle. During that little era, we need to start that now. The B.I., the, the, the Lonzo, we need to start that. And I know a lot of people don't want to go down that path. That's a scary place for Los Angeles Lakers. But I'm telling you, it, 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 we're going to have to start it at some point. You're going to be bad either way. The question is, are you going to be bad for a reason? Or are you going to be bad just because you can't seem to figure out you need to start the rebuild? And then you can start the rebuild, still be bad for the extended period of time after being bad while not realizing you needed to rebuild. You see what I'm saying? You're going to be bad either way. So I see it. I know I'm supposed to be talking about the Phoenix Suns Laker game, but if you guys follow me, you know I wasn't going to be talking about this Phoenix game. I don't care about this game. You shouldn't either for, for the most part. I think the Lakers need to just shut everybody down that's not named Austin Reeves, THT, and just let them run the whole game. Winyan Gabriel, THT, Austin Reeves, and uh, Stanley Johnson, you know, Malik Monk. They should be the only ones playing tonight. I'm not going to lie to you. It shouldn't, be, it shouldn't be too many more people out there. You have to sub in some guys, obviously, for for them to get a rest, but all of those players should get about 32 minutes tonight each. I just run them. Run them, run them, run them, run them, run them. Why? Because there's no nothing else to do. You running LeBron and AD out there, they bust a knee out there, we'll never be okay. We'll never, we won't recover. That's the reality of it. You had AD out there on a bad ankle in the last game and the previous game before that. It's like you, it's like you, you get away with it. You played them, got away with it. You played them, got away with it. You're going to go out there and you're going to try it again, huh? It wasn't it wasn't good enough to get away with it twice in a row. You gotta you gotta stick your hand in your toe in that water again. It's just like you know what? That's what I'm talking about. They just ain't gonna be happy until everything is a lot worse than it is. You know, and maybe we get away with it tonight. Maybe 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 AD goes out there, has a great game, doesn't bust his knee up. You know what I mean? But I just don't like playing with with fire like that. That is absolutely and utterly bad. You're walking a tightrope at a hundred thousand feet above the ground. It's that's how bad this is. Like, why are you? Why? Why? Why take risk like this when there's so little to gain? See, that's another thing. This team has a terrible understanding of risk to reward ratio as it pertains to the risk that they take as a franchise. Yeah, not good at that. Very, very bad at that. Very bad at that. So. It's just it just is what it is. Jeannie needs to bring some people in who are not, and we need to uh, to be patient as fans because this is going to be a very long and treacherous road. Um, this is not a normal rebuild because we need to find the pieces. They don't just come to us. The Lakers are going to have to be proactive in 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 finding players that can do something for them out of the G League or out of the buy-in. You know, some of these one million dollar guys got to play better, and then. Uh, we can start acquiring the picks that we don't have otherwise. Or we can just run AD and LeBron into the ground and see what happens. And then start the rebuild after that. That's what I'm saying. I don't, no. Suck for a purpose. Trust me on that. That's the only way to go. So that's what I got to say, man. Phoenix, congratulations on the win tonight. I'm, I'm calling it before it even happens. I'm not the type of fan who's going to play games. I know Frank is going to do everything he can to lose. And I know we're not going to have the uh, the players out there to win. Just not. Uh, Braun is probably going to sit this one out. I think he's, he's he's mailed it in, and I think it's the right move. I'm not the fan that's going to say, oh, Braun quit on us. No, he didn't. He should have quit on us weeks ago. If he was smarter, he would have quit on us weeks ago. Honestly. It's this nonsense he's doing running around for the scoring title. He's going to get the scoring title anyway. You know why? Because he's going to play another three, four years. That's why I don't understand why he wants to mortgage everything for this season. What if you do bust your knee tonight? What if, what if, then what happens for next season? How does that mess up the trajectory of you actually getting a chance to play another three, four years 
so that you can get the scoring title. See, these are the type of things. I watched Carl Malone play for the Lakers. I, that's, that's why I'm speaking the way I'm speaking. Because Carl Malone looked great at 37 or whatever age he was here. I think he was 37. He looked great. You know, he, he was never the athletic specimen of LeBron James, but the equivalent of being in excellent shape and being able to handle business, I could argue Carl was more doable than Bron was that year than he is this year. But Carl had that freak accident of the knee. Somebody plowed into his knee while he wasn't even in the game, if I, if I remember correctly. It was something like that. He wasn't even in the game. And some, some dude ran into his knee while he was on the sidelines, bust his knee up, and he never returned. He went from excellent shape to never return. Because that's how it is when you're this age. You know what I mean? Like, that's how it is. <laughs> so that's why I'm, I'm, I speak the way that I speak in regards to Bron in terms of just playing one more game and testing it out one more time. No, nah, I don't test it out one more time. Call this season to end. All it takes is one basketball game to get hurt, man. That, that, it, it don't take eight, nine games. All it takes is one. So I just don't think we should be playing like that with these people's health, and I don't think we should be playing with them as our assets. So I say it a million times. That's what it is. Uh, Phoenix Suns uh, campaign Cam Johnson. It's going to be a Cam night. They're probably going to rest their starters, and it's going to be a Cam night. So, so just prepare for that. And um, I'm just miserable at our coach for not, not playing Austin Reeves. I don't see any upside in not playing Austin Reeves. I see no potential success coming from playing Avery Bradley a bunch of minutes at the end of the season. None. There's, there's no upside to that. There's no positivity to that. There's nothing good about it. That is the wrong decision uh, in, in, in a pile of many wrong decisions by, by this franchise and by the coaching staff. So that's something I'm going to be looking for. And hopefully Austin Reeves can get back out there since he's been scrutinized so much, Coach has, for not playing him. Um, hopefully he can, he can kind of feel that pressure and put the kid in the game so he can develop and be who it is that he's been for us all season, one of the most important key role players we've had all year. And this idiot waits till the end of the season when it's time to play him the most minutes since he's a young undrafted player to give him no minutes and play veterans who should be out the league next season. So... I mean, I'm not trying to be too disrespectful and say I hate Frank Vogel because that's ridiculous. But my level of disdain for his coaching style is about there. It's about there. So I'll leave it at that. Um, and yeah, that's it, man. I, I would love to see our youngsters get minutes tonight. I just think that's the only thing worth doing. Ain't nothing else. Ain't, there's nothing else. They give us the best chance to win, and it's what you should be doing on top of that. So, yeah, play the youngsters. Anyway, y'all. Uh, like I've told you guys in the previous video about the Lakers, I'm Lakered out. I'm ready to talk about the changes the team is going to make. Um, news of, of Frank Vogel being fired is what I'm ready to talk about. Not this. Not anything having to do with this roster staying assembled. Um, and so hopefully we can dismantle it, gut the team completely, start the rebuild, suck for a couple years, and get some youngsters in this team that we can be proud of once again. And even if they're not good enough to win a championship, at least we'll be in a position to build from there. If they're not good enough to win a championship, you can trade them away. Trade them, get more picks, start over, retool, do it till you find what you need, just like everybody else is doing. But you can't start that process till you understand you need to, and that's where I'm at. My name is BDL44. Thank you all for watching. I'm out.